I just love those Wellingtons. You do like those Wellingtons, don't you? I think they're great, yeah. Cosy on the outside, deceptively spacious on the inside. Oh, I like that. Lovely wood burner there. And lovely tiles as well on yeah. the beams. 400 years old, this property. You can see how old it is, yeah. can't you? Yeah, well, I love the thick walls. Yeah. Is that a bread oven by the side? It is, yeah. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Lovely little features everywhere you look. But the big question is, can you imagine living here? Well, I can, because I can just see my table fitting across yeah, there. Yeah, your table would actually just, fit. Just there. I've got a, a very lot seven foot long farmhouse table, okay. which just go so there nicely. Nice. Nice. Perfect. Mm. Mm. So you're already moving in, more or less, aren't you? You've only seen one room. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> well, we're off to a great start in the living room. Let's see if the kitchen delivers as well. So this is an 80s extension, OK? All right. They've got nice new kitchen and equipment in this work surfaces and all the reasonable bar. size. It's good size, isn't it? Hmm. So far so good. I think it's it, yeah. Yeah. Off the kitchen there's a back door leading to the garden as well as the family bathroom. Next we're heading upstairs and despite its cottage status, there are four bedrooms up on the first floor. Let's head off to the master. This is the main bedroom. All right. There's some built-in wardrobes. Quite like the exposed beam as well, and the exposed stone. I think it's a nice, cosy little room. It looks to me as if it's not level, because looking no. at the above the wardrobe, you can see how it widens out from yeah. that side to the It's 400 slope, years it? old. It's great. I think I'll you'd probably it. have a bit of a slope if you no, were on the I have years. a slope now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the main bedroom, as I said. It's the largest yeah. room. So uh, who'd have this one? Me. OK. Glad we sorted that out. No arguments there. Then Mum's sorted in the biggest room. But there are also some good options for Elizabeth up here, too. There's another good-sized double bedroom and also a single that's been used as a music room, which is just what Elizabeth asked for. So that's somewhere for her to play. Next, we're going to see somewhere she could rest. OK, another pink room. Yes. You're not smiling as much. Me? Yeah. It's not my room. <laughs> I love your attitude, I really do. <laughs> do you like it? Yeah, it's got a beam. All the rooms are quite bright, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, indeed, yeah. So I get the impression that you actually really like this house uh, Ooh, wholeheartedly. Yeah. There's uh, something stopping you, what is it? I love downstairs, I love it. And I come up here and I think it's because I've got used to having a bigger room. So looking at these two rooms, neither of them would be. But you could knock these walls out, make one big room, have two windows looking down the garden. Hey, Presto, good in. you've then got a nicer room than your mum. And then I run up to come move in here. Oh, no. <laughs> but I, I like what you're thinking, though, because, you, you, as you say, they, you know, these yeah, walls will come down. Yeah. yeah. And then you'd have a, a big open space up and here and downstairs. And it would be very light, and it would start about here. Mm. Uh, it's great to see Elizabeth imagining how best to make the inside of this property work for them. But what about the outside? To the rear of the house, there's a lawned garden with a shed and a greenhouse. It's not a huge plot, but there's just about enough space for a few chickens. But for a flock of sheep, a goat and a pony, I may have to come up with something else. I loved the living room. It was absolutely amazing. Um, it had so many features that we were looking for. But then the upstairs, um, I suppose the bedrooms were a bit small. The only problem with this place is there's no land for the pony. No, we couldn't fit him in the garage, could we? <laughs> no. Ah, here you are. You took your time, which is a good sign. And you're smiling. Get in the car. I'm taking you somewhere now, guaranteed to put an even bigger smile on your face. At the moment, Carol and Elizabeth make a mammoth five-hour round trip to visit their animals on rented land. However, I've got something up my sleeve which would be a separate purchase to this house. It's only 15 minutes away. I love teasing you. You haven't got a clue where we're going, have you? We're no idea at all, man. What would you hope it to be? Um, five acre field with a field shelter and some water. OK. Well, Carol, we'd hate to disappoint you, so we won't. So, girls, uh, can you guess why I've brought you here? That was grazing! Yay! Look at the smile on your face. <laughs> You've got 4.2 acres here. Mm -hmm. uh, little stream down the bottom, it's a natural water, and it's dry store as well, which the current owner's put in. Everything you need, really, isn't it? it well, yes, yeah. it looks good. About a 15-minute drive from the property you saw, so uh, much quicker than the commute you're doing now. 
Yes. So uh, you've seen the house. Now you've seen the 4.2 acre land. Different owners, how much do you think it's all worth? Well, adding it all together, 270,000. 270,000, what do you think? Yeah, I'd say that's fair. Well, you're in for a little bit of a pleasant surprise because this land is currently on the market for £45,000 and the house, which you really liked, uh, £220,000, so 265 in all. But both owners will take offers, so probably you're looking at their maximum budget. So it's doable? Yes! You excited about yes. that? Yes! All this could be yours! <laughs> well, tell you what, go and uh, check out the land and uh, I'll catch up with you later. Brilliant. Go on. Okay. Thank you. Well, we thought it was going to be mission impossible. Maybe it's mission possible. We've got a lovely bit of land uh, to keep the animals happy and a lovely home to keep the humans happy. For a combined total of £265,000, our first selection consists of two separate purchases, a 4.2 acre plot of land and a charming semi-detached character cottage in a peaceful rural location. For a small property, it packs a punch with four bedrooms. It also has spacious ground floor accommodation, which includes an open plan lounge diner and a modern kitchen. The price of both the land and the property is £15,000 over budget, and their locations are 15 minutes apart. But will they forego that short distance to realise their Cornish country dream? The stream at the bottom, decent fencing as it's been mm. used for horses before. The only thing is it's four miles away from the house, it's not attached. I think the land's a nice field, a nice size, and the shelter's good. Carol and Elizabeth hope to turn their holiday memories into an everyday reality, and it's the enchanting Cornish coast that's driving the move. In fact, the dramatic, rugged coastline attracts millions of visitors every year who come to experience the beaches, secluded coves and picturesque fishing harbours. Tucked into the Cornish cliffs to the south, the pretty 13th century village of Polpero is one such place. The narrow streets are tightly packed with old fishermen's cottages and gift shops. During the house hunting week, we sent our buyers to meet up with Polpero-born Tim Cortis to find out more about the history of this delightful location. The bay has been home to fishermen for some 800 years, but in the 18th century, seafarers brought a very different type of catch back to the harbour, for Paul Perrault's ideal isolated position was once infamous for smuggling. It was uh, highly organised here. All sorts of goods were smuggled. Uh, anything, really, that had a, a high uh, rate of tax, um, much like today, tobacco and alcohol. Uh, Different things were important then, lace, uh, some ceramics, all sorts were, were brought in uh, by sea, hidden away in houses, caves, just anywhere along the cliffs where it could be concealed from the revenue men. So who would be involved with that then? Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. The entire village basically was involved. You know, it was, it was an actual industry. Uh, even the vicar was involved. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, it wasn't seen as a crime. Back then, smuggling was an essential way of life. High taxes and heavy duty were placed on both luxury goods and basic commodities, compelling fishermen to supplement their lowly income by getting involved. This illegal trade reached its peak in the latter half of the 1700s, led by Zephaniah Job. Job organised the distribution of smuggled goods and also looked after the welfare of the local people, advising and managing their finances. He became known as the Smuggler's Banker, operating from a cottage on the quayside called Jews Bank, a building which still survives today. When the government introduced stiffer penalties for smuggling, Job turned his energies to the prosperous pilchard fishing industry, and he took charge of exports between Polpero and Italy. There were three pilchard packing factories around the harbour here. The Three Pilchards pub here was the uh, coaching inn at the time. And the merchants from Italy would be staying there. And the pub got its name because they would have three pilchards, one from each factory, yeah. for breakfast. And that was how they decided which, which uh, of the factories they were going to use for their supply that year, that season. Much like the merchants, we're also giving our buyers a choice of three in our property quest. So it's time to savour what we're serving up with our second house.
We've scoured Cornwall for a property to match our buyer's dream, but it's really been tough to find somewhere with enough adjoining land. Though we may have the answer to their prayers with our second property. But to get there, we're crossing the county border. We're travelling just over 10 miles from Cornwall to Van Green in Devon. This is a seriously rural location offering all the peace and tranquility of the countryside. Other than a very handy farm shop, there's a little else in Ben Green. But they wouldn't be too isolated as Holsworthy is only six miles away. It's the nearest town and has a large range of shops. The property itself is a lovely detached bungalow and has only just come onto the market. In fact, we're the very first people to look around it. The outside space means so much to them, so we're going to start there. And this property should really test their commitments to running a small holding as it would be paradise for all their animals. So what we've got here, uh, this is your own little courtyard, if you like. Yeah, good Gate. yard. Uh, you've got um, what could be stables in there. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, little pigsties in there at the moment. Oh, yeah. Um, six outbuildings in all. Oh, this is great. Yeah. yeah, super stable yard is this. Not only is there plenty of room to keep all the animals warm and dry, but there's also over an acre of land, including lawned gardens and a paddock. Great access for your animals uh, onto this, your land. So how, how big is the land? Uh, 1.2 acres. Right. Y you don't look too happy. I thought you'd come out here kind of doing a bit of that, or maybe in your case, a bit of that. <laughs> no, I'm just having a, an assess at it. Would this work for you, though? I think it would work, yes. Yeah, it would work. We would have to manage it very carefully, but with the stables, you could do it. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. Mm. Yeah, it would work. Um, should we have a look in the house? Yeah. Certainly, yeah. Come on, then. Mm. I really did think the outside space would win them over. Perhaps their spirits have been dampened by the weather, because when the skies are clearer, this is a great spot with spectacular views over the Devonshire countryside. But there's lots more to see inside the property.